So up to now, we have been talking about common emitter stage. And now I'm going to talk about a very important variation of this stage that is so important that I actually decided to call it a different type of amplifier. Remember we said that we have three and a half types of amplifier. We have common emitter, we have common collector and common base. And I said that I'm going to talk about these two in the next lecture or next week. Uh, with common emitter, you could have a normal common emitter that we have seen up to now. And then we could have, so let's say normal, and we could have the common emitter with degeneration or with emitter degeneration. And what it means really in terms of like what we care about is that we're going to have a resistor in the emitter, right? Up to now, we had the exact same circuit without the resistor to the, in the emitter, meaning that the emitter was connected to ground. Now we have a resistor there. And let's see what does that resistor do in terms of like basically a gain and input impedance and output impedance and all that, okay? By the way, just to kind of uh, remind you of something when last week when we were talking about biasing, remember that when we added this resistor there, it actually helped us a lot in terms of getting a better biasing or more stable or less sensitive to, well, let's say voltage changes or resistor changes or beta changes in our bias point, right? So generally it's something that when we are trying to do biasing, it's something that is good. So we like to have this resistor. So we already have a motivation to have this resistor because, well, it allows us to have a better biasing. Let's see what are the implications of this, this resistor on the input and output impedance and also on the, uh, more importantly, probably gain. Because at the end of the day, we have an amplifier and the most important job of an amplifier is to amplify. So we care about gain more than anything else. So first stage of analysis is going to be the same as everything else that we have done up to now. We do the small signal analysis or a small signal model. We draw the small signal model. The circuit looks like this. So pretty much similar to what we had before. Uh, for now, I've just uh, kind of, uh, I have uh, ignored the R0. Just for the simplicity, we're gonna talk about R0 later on and we're gonna see the effect of R0 later on. So uh, the same thing I had before, except that at the emitter, so this is the emitter terminal. At the emitter, I have a resistor RE to ground. Okay, now if I want to write the gain, uh, I do the same thing that I've done before. So I'm going to say that if this is some current, let's call it Ix, my V out is going to be equal to Rc times Ix. And I know that that Ix is negative GMV pi. So it's going to be, my V out is going to be negative GM Rc times V pi. So with a normal common emitter amplifier, my job was pretty much done at this point but because Vpi was Vn and I and my gain became negative GMRC, right? Because emitter at that point was ground. So Vpi and Vn were the same thing, therefore I was done, right? But now I see that Vpi is not Vn, so I have to somehow relate Vpi and Vn together and find its new relationship and then from there try to calculate the relationship between V out and V in. Okay, so if I want to do that, I would say V in. Um, if I want to write a KVL, I know that V in minus V pi minus V R E is equal to zero, right? Therefore, V in is equal to V pi plus V R E. This is equal to V pi plus. Now, what do I write instead of V R E? V R E is well, let's do one more step, is really RE times IE, the current that is flowing through the emitter, right? And that's equal to, so therefore, um, VN is equal to V pi plus RE. And now let's see what is IE. IE is, uh, is made of two different current components. There's this one and there's this one. The one that's coming from the collector side is just GM V pi. That's the easy one. And the one that is coming from the base side is the current at the input. I'm going to write it as a function of V pi because I want to relate V in and V pi. So it's really V pi divided by R pi, right? Because, well, Ohm's law, right? So Ohm's law tells me that V pi divided by R pi is the current through the resistor R pi, and that's the current that comes to emitter as well. So now I have everything based on R pi, based on V pi. So I can write this as V pi times one plus 
1 over r pi plus gm and then the whole thing times re okay now i can actually write v out in terms of v in v out is going to be uh, negative gm rc and then instead of v pi i'm going to write v in divided by this term right it's going to be times one over so this times v in so one plus one over r pi plus gm times r e okay so this is a long and ugly exp uh, expression let's try to actually simplify it a little bit okay i'm going to use the same trick that i did when, when i was actually calculating the resistance looking into the emitter inside this parenthesis here i see that i have an r one over r pi plus gm right and i know that this is equal to uh, one plus gm r pi over r pi and knowing that gm r pi is beta and it's generally a big number i can say that one plus gm r pi is approximately gm r pi therefore r pi and r pi cancel this is approximately equal to gm okay now from these two i can say that this is equal to negative from i can say that v out over v in is equal to negative gm rc over now in the denominator i just have one plus gm re and that's the expression that i have here okay so the gain of this stage is negative gm rc over one plus gm re uh, if i want to compare this to the normal common emitter remember this was the gain of a normal common emitter stage so although adding this resistor was really helpful to do a better bias current to to have a more stable and less sensitive kind of a bias point in terms of gain it's actually awful meaning that it actually reduces my gain by a factor of one plus gmre so whatever re that i have here first of all it better be small because well the the, the bigger it is the more I attenuate the gain. So I don't like this RE in terms of gain at least, right? So this circuit is not going to give you a good gain. If you're, if the most important thing that you're looking after is gain, you probably don't want to do common emitter with emitter degeneration, right? Because the gain is going to be a lot smaller than the gain that you had with a normal common emitter, okay? Another uh, observation that I can make is that I can actually simplify this expression to this form, right? All I did here is that I divided the denominator and uh, the numerator by GM, right? So I just uh, divided the numerator by GM, so I get RC, and the denominator by GM, so I get 1 over GM plus RE. Why is that really something better? Because it doesn't look better, at least from the aesthetic point of view. Uh, well, if you look at it, the numerator is the resistance that they see it that they have at the collector the resistance i have at collector what is re the resistance that they have at the emitter and what is one over gm the resistance looking into the emitter so looking into the emitter in one of the previous slides we found out that looking into the emitter i see one over gm at the at the emitter i have re so the gain is going to be all the resistors that i have at the collector all the resistors that over all the resistors that i have at the emitter plus one over gm okay so why is this helpful why is this even important imagine that i change this circuit and i add it let's say some other random resistance here rx and some other random resistor here to vcc or to ground right let's call that um, ry okay what would be the new gain without doing any analysis i can say that for this new circuit av is going to be negative all the resistor at the collector are rc in parallel with ry in the denominator i'm going to have one over gm 
and all the resistors at the emitter are RE in parallel with RX right so this is how I actually I can I can make a small variations in my circuit so now that I know what is the gain of a common emitter state with emitter degeneration I know that it doesn't have to be just a single RC it doesn't have to be a single RE it's basically whatever I have at the emitter if I replace it with a resistor that resistor is going to be appearing here if whatever I have at the collector if I replace it with a resistor that resistor is going to be appearing here okay now this is this becomes important because imagine that this be out imagine that you don't have and we are going to see that right uh, imagine you don't have a single stage amplifier let's say this V out is the input to another stage of amplification let's say you have a common emitter amplifier here with another RC2 to VCC and this is going to ground right and then this would be the final V out for that kind of circuit uh, if you want to calculate the gain from V into let's say if you want the gain from V into here let's call that V midpoint VM if you want VM over VN then the resistance that you see at the at the collector is going to be just RC in parallel with RY in parallel with whatever resistance that you see looking into the next stage which is well for a common emitter I know looking into the base I see R pi so I just all I need to do is to make this in so change this to in parallel with R pi 2 the R pi of the second transistor let's call this Q2 okay these are a little bit more advanced stuff we're going to talk more about multi-stage amplifiers but I want to actually kind of warm you up into it I want to actually get you prepared when we're talking about these stuff it's good to know why we have a why we have a uh, expression like this why we care about the gain expression to look like this because it helps us to not to do any more analysis like I just made a single stage amplifier to a two, two stage amplifier and I didn't need to write a single KVL or I didn't need to actually draw the small signal analysis anymore and I only use my knowledge of uh, well this gain expression and knowing that whatever I have at the numerator is all the resistors that are connected to the collector which includes the RY RC and whatever resistance that I see looking into the second stage of my amplification okay but uh, the more important point of this this slide is really to calculate how the gain of the common emitter with degeneration is calculated and how is it different from a normal common emitter we saw that in terms of gain we're actually losing something so although it's a better uh, it's a good choice to have a resistance in the emitter for the biasing reasons uh, from the gain point of view it's not really a good idea to actually have a resistance at the emitter unless we have to do it and then if you do no well, this is the gain expression or this is the other alternative for this gain expression